Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! What up, brothers? It's Uncle Rick Meister returning. And I just thought I'd do a new uh, look at the collection just to show you where I ended 2014. So Merry Christmas to you all. Massive shout out to all my new subscribers and people who are sharing my videos, liking them, commenting and subscribing. It does mean a lot to see that my channel is uh, always progressing. I was looking back and I thought, I normally like to do a collection video probably every, I don't know, three, four months. Because I do buy to review, I collect and sell. So the collection does always rotate. So I thought what I want to do is film a quick uh, collection video, show you each shelf as I want you to see them, so to speak. So like the photos I would put up on the Facebook groups and just tell you what I've finished the year with. Obviously, I've got some plans for next year. Uh, I will continue to keep reviewing and keeping the figures I want and obviously moving on the ones I don't see as must-keep figures. So that's what I'm going to do. Thanks for watching. Stick with me. All right, I think we'll start off here because this is my tinker shelf. If something makes it to top central in the uh, big cabinet, this is pretty much the figures that I've I'm most interested in at the moment are the ones I'm going to be reposing, touching and messing about with. Either trying to get a symmetrical setup or a picturesque shot, pretty much like that if you were to pause it and do a screenshot. And also the figures of interest at the moment. So when I say that, I do like all five figures here. But I would say the uh, the sort of eye catches at the moment for me are still the self, uh, stealth suit Captain America, which I do love. And also the Amazing Spider-Man 2. But let's move in and get some close detail on the figures individually. Also with the Mark 42, I put with a, uh, it's a third party head sculpt. It's not the best, to be honest. I would say the new one on the uh, Arc Reactor set that's just been released in Hong Kong is possibly the best Robert Downey Jr. head. I would like to see it on this figure. That's probably, the, like I said, the best one at the moment. This one was good when I first got it, but... It's uh, probably not as good as some of the others. You will notice to keep the shelf uniform, I've gone for a generic stand. I've just not put no decals on it yet. But this is a really beautiful figure. Probably the uh, my favourite Iron Man that's out at the moment. But uh, that might be bettered by the Mark 42. I'm not sure. That is a nice looking figure. And I do honestly prefer more red on my Iron Man figures. So, yeah, nice looking figure at the front. And like I said, I did go for the, the symmetry, sort of the front three characters. Go to the uh, strike suit. I suppose it's the Steve Rogers because he's got his helmet in his hand. I do like this figure. If you watch some of my recent videos, you see I have had a little tinker around with it. Took the fat suit off from underneath. Did a little bit of repainting on the gloves and on the straps and that. Uh, so yeah, but I do really like that. Yeah, I did get the double set luckily. So yeah, do love that figure. Moving across. It's the light armor uh, Thor from the Dark World. Again, it is my uh, favorite sort of rendition of Thor that's out at the moment, or version, whatever you want to call it. I do love the uh, the more classic look with the uh, without the sleeves. I've got decals on that. Not the best decals in the world, I will say to Joel Turner on that one. I have got a lot better ones from him, but I think you're having a problem with his printer at that point. But uh, it's a really nice figure, and I do really love that one as well. Over his shoulder, moving up, and I will say I do like the pose on this Hulk. I always try to pose Hulk so that I don't get too many joints showing him. If you have one arm sort of back and one forward, pretty much like a boxing style stance, you don't see the joints of the back shoulder, so you're sort of half in your joints, but really nice figure. I will say as well, I am always impressed with how this uh, iPhone 6 records. It always looks good on the screen. And the transfer does come across really good. So I have done it on that instead of on my camcorder. So although I'm shooting into light, it's still nice and clear. So yeah, another nice figure. Some people say, why haven't you sold that yet? I think, well, because there isn't a better version of Hulkite yet. So why would I sell it yet? Anyway, this is definitely the best version of Hot Toy Spider-Man. It's the Amazing Spider-Man 2. Got it pretty recent. Did a, a lot of video footage on this. Really nice figure. Really enjoyed messing around with it when I first got it. Reposing it, just trying to get that natural look. Uh, and I do like, sort of, again, the symmetry with the sheer size of the Hulk and the fact that Spider Man's uh, in the air. I do like how it looks all together. And then obviously, you've got the, the sort of solider characters 
more static at the front and like I say I do like the look of the shelf all, the, all together moving down a shelf and that's pretty much where I would want you to see it from or maybe there so you can see the, uh, the DX10's eyes but it's pretty much the theme of the shelf would be the uh, the sci-fi classics uh, I don't know if I call Dread a, a classic or from the film anyway but it is a really nice figure I'm going to start calling this bandwagon figure actually I think because so many people bought this figure one of best selling figures a year and since it was released all you see is people selling it and I think why are they selling it there's a couple of things to dislike about it namely the hands but apart from that it's a really really nice figure and the value on it was really good so it's not one that I'd be selling anytime soon. I, I bought it because I really liked it and I intend on keeping it and I thought it would complement this shelf well, which I think it really, really do, uh, really does. Again, one of the figures you review and don't get massive views on, but I have done a full review on that and I'm quite proud of that review. So if you've not seen it, please have a look. Over his right shoulder, the awesome uh, Robocop figure. That's a figure. This is the single version. When I reviewed it, I actually reviewed the... Uh, the Robocop and the chair lent to me by uh, Chris Harris. Massive shout out to him for doing that. But again, beautiful figure. Pretty much a, a DX die cast figure for me. The stuff it brought, the face plates and so on and so forth. They got the articulation really good. Just a really nice figure. And then most people just talk about the fact that it's slightly the wrong colour. And I think, fucking let it go boys. It's a fucking beauty and you know it is. Anyway, moving across to uh, Dread's other shoulder. And this is pretty much a mashup of the DX10 with the spare DX13 head. So I've gone sort of Galleria because he's got the black t-shirt on. I do like the fact that you can see his, both his eyes over his uh, over his glasses. He has got the shotgun. So it's not particularly screen accurate, but I just think it's a really nice pose and good use of both sets of spare parts that I had. So going over his shoulder, I think most people would agree that the DX13 for one six scale is the Terminator 2 to have. It's just a total beauty. Best figure, I still think, straight out of the box. Some would argue, but yeah, really, really nice. Nothing to dislike about it, really. Again, I've got him mashed up. So, sort of end of Terminator 2 look. Another figure I really, really like. Moving to back central, I've got the classic Predator, which is my sort of tipping my hat to... Um, Sort of the original Predator film. The only one that I would give classic status, I think. I know people jump up and say, well, it's the classic Predator from Predators. And I say, I know it is. I'm not a fucking idiot. But it's close enough for me to the original Predator. That's, that's the one that I chose to keep. Moving across to the classic uh, 84 Terminator or the Terminator. Another really, really good figure. Just like everything about it. Did need some tinkering way. But again, it was pretty much a DX figure. You did get two head sculpts, but without the Purs eye system. So again, really good uh, value. And another figure I saw, everybody bought it, but then they wanted to move it straight on. I'm thinking, fucking hell, boys, what's your criteria? I mean, I sell figures as much as anybody, but you think it figures I've reviewed and moved on. You're pretty much talking Iron Man figures and Marvel figures that we've had 50 different variants of. So uh, one thing I don't like about this central cabinet, and most people seem to love it, I hate the fact that you can see that wire, uh, wire in there. I always try to get a shot where you can't really see it, but it is visible and it pisses me off. But yeah, do like the sci-fi shelf. I'll show you again. That's where I'd uh, want you looking at it from, sort of straight on. So again, you get the uh, the triangular symmetry look, and I really like it. Right, now moving down to the bottom. If something sort of makes it down to the bottom, it's because I'm losing interest a little bit, or I've not put a new figure on there for a while, so it steadily moves its way down. I do rotate them quite often, but also... This shelf is sort of a work in progress. These are the ones that I would be posing next if I were to clean and repose out. I've pretty much gone for the full Batman look. As you can see, the shelf is sponsored by my good friend Tony May. All my Batmans are wearing his capes and they are must-haves for any Batman fans. Let's move him. This has also got the Tony May squinting eye conversion, which you've probably seen before. Slightly modded, that figure. Pretty much straight up and down that one with a longer version cape. Still one of my favourite figures, all in all. Moving up on this one. This one's pretty stock. Well, not stock, because I did tinker about with that, but it's closer to stock. It's not had the eye conversion, but it has had the eyes repainted. 
again the short length cape which I really like really natural like I said they are must haves if you ever buy an Octoys Batman just fucking throw a cape straight away and go and see your Uncle Tony May and he'll sort you out in the middle I've got the Bane I'm going to repose Bane get him holding his brace again more classic look I think and then moving across that is the DX11 but I've got the third party I think it's the Ed Play Ed it's just a copy of the is it Michael Choi sculpt could be pronounced that wrong but it is a copy of that and then I repainted it myself sort of darkened the eyes and the lips so it does uh, pop a little bit more but really nice figure although when I got this head sculpt it when I look back now at the DX11 in everybody else's collection and my spare one the bag I think fucking hell the, the sculpts weren't even that close which is not the case with this figure the mime version of Joker the DX what is it 14 i think it's the last dx figure so far uh up to date should i say really nice figure although gets very little attention in the community i do like it i think the head sculpt is faultless it just doesn't appear in the film enough moving across the 89 michael keaton batman i always seem to pose that straight up and down i need something doing with it because i'm losing a little bit of interest in the figure it's not that i'd sell it it's just that i don't know i need to get in a pose that blows my mind Moving across the 89 version of Joker with the uh, the berry on, kindly done to uh, done for me by Steve Morris, friend of mine in the uh, Facebook community. Again, really nice figure. So yeah, it is hard for me to film this because I'm actually laid on floor. But yeah, nice show, some nice figures in there, and a lot of them are DXs. Talking about DXs, these are also all DX figures. And really good choice of characters, although I would say probably Bruce would be the most iconic, then probably Indiana Jones. Jack Sparrow is an iconic character, I suppose, but from a, I don't know, a questionable film, let's say. Let's talk about the Bruce first. I did I used to have a few versions of Bruce, and I did have like um, third-party outfits as well, but because I like to keep the collection, what I would class as cream of the crop figures... And I do like them spaced out and posed, sometimes naturally, sometimes quite action-packed, but space is always an issue for me. So this is the look that I decided to go for, for me only representation of Bruce now. Like I said, a really nice figure and a most uh, must-have in most collections. Moving to the back, beautiful, still one at best head sculpts, the Jack Sparrow. I did come with two heads. Like I say, all these figures have been reviewed on my channel, so if you're new to collecting or you're new to my channel, please have a look, because everything that would back up and give you the information or my thoughts on all these figures would be on my channel. Just so much to look at on this figure. It's just a really, really nice one. Nice set altogether. We amazing, or two amazing face sculpts. Really nice. Moving across to me, Indiana Jones. Again, another figure that don't get massive love. I've always really liked it. I did tinker with it, like I've said in some other videos. Messed about, did some 5 o'clock shadow. I've never ever dusted his hat. So he looks like he's come straight out in a ruin or out in a cave. Same with his coat. I dirted his trousers. I mean, some have got some people have got some awesome Indiana Jones. But I'm really, really keen on mine because the work I did, I did it myself. I didn't go to none of the big well-known painters or customizers i did what i want to do to it myself i got it how i wanted and some people might say well i like it some might say i don't like it and i just think well as long as i like it their opinions are secondary so yeah i will say as well and i hadn't noticed that until i've got it on this camera i think the last time i posed his eyes i think his right eye is stuck in position because he looks a little bit cockeyed but i will sort that out off camera Yep, another three nice figures. So, uh, we'll move on. Moving down one, and I've got my only Star Wars figures and my only Sideshow figure. Again, it's the DX Luke, so another DX in the collection. A figure that, I've got to be honest, bores me to tears. I don't understand why, because it's an awesome set and a really nice looking figure. I think the head sculpts are really nice. I think everything about them are really nice. It just never catches my eye. I look at everything else apart from that. It doesn't even really complement it, the fact that it's posed with the Sideshow Vader, which I think is a really nice figure. And, I'll be honest, if I were to sell either of them two, the likelihood is I would sell Luke before the Darth Vader, even though I know Hot Toys are doing a Vader. Because I think this is a really, really good figure, and the price is also really good value. 
So yeah, just show them together. The reason I don't have Darth with his lightsaber out is because that is when you mainly notice that the figures are out of scale from each other, which is a bit of a problem and probably why a lot of people didn't pick up the Sideshow Vader. Moving down another shelf, and as you can see, I've got all three released versions of Wolverine. Um, and I do like certain parts of each. So let's move in and have a look. The X-Men Origins Wolverine. Now showing its age a little bit for me, particularly the head sculpt. Not as accurate as it used to appear, but uh, still a really nice figure. And it's still one of them figures that holds its value really well and is still quite sought after. I think that's because a lot of the ones that are around at the moment are fake and nobody wants a fake one. So they will pay a little bit more to get the original one. Like I said, I've had that figure quite a long time and I suppose I've been close to selling it a couple of times, but there's always something stopped me. Moving across to the Last Stand version, which I'm one of the people who actually does like it. This figure got a lot of disrespect because of the uh, teeth showing, but I really like it. I do like the iconic X-Men clothing, and I will say, if I were to display any version of Wolverine with my Marvel shelf, it would probably be this one, because the fact he's wearing an outfit or a uniform, should I say, a comic book or close to the comic book outfit, this would be the one that I would display with the other heroes. Moving across to the Wolverine from the Wolverine movie. This one for me is the most accurate, Ed sculpt wise and probably the best value of all of them because you do get two full outfits. All you would need is another, obviously, an head and a body uh, because the other outfit has a set of, new set of boots, uh, another set of claws. Uh, well, obviously, I've got two spare sets of claws. I've got the adamantium ones and the bone claws. I think you could make a really nice display just using this figure but yeah really do like how they all look together they're not too far off each other that you think well that one's shit but i think it's more a case that they complement each other and you see the progression of the uh, character in the movies moving down and away from the uh, superhero uh, licenses we're talking gangsters or classic gangsters should we say no more so classic than uh, don vito corleone from the godfather Beautiful piece. Had that one quite a long time as well. This might be my longest surviving figure. And it's not the most interesting figure to look at, but I just like the fact I've got it because I know that while ever I've got it, any other gangster figure that comes out, a Robert De Niro or other versions, Al Pacino or anybody else you want to mention from the classic gangster films, I don't know. It's it's going to be complemented by this figure. This is where gangster films started. Or the gangster films as we know of them now, this is the uh, this is the start, and probably still the daddy. Going across another mover character I love, it's Tony Montana from Scarface. That's the Enter Bay one using the Blitzway chair. Not everybody's cup of tea that head sculpt, but I really like it. There's certain parts of the film where it is really, really dead on accurate, and I do like the character. And Enter Bay's paintwork sometimes even out. Uh, outstrips Hot Toys, which is a bold statement. I prefer that head sculpt, I'll be honest. That is the respect version. Just got a nice, calm look. Perfect for Al Pacino at that age, sort of early 80s. And again, a simple figure, but something very, very accurate and realistic about it. There's only certain figures that actually look down, look like shrunk down versions of the, uh, the human, sort of the human it's based on. And for me, that would be one of them. One of my favourite head sculpts with sculpted eyes, that. Moving across, it's a slightly older Al Pacino, playing uh, Carlito Brigante in Carlito's Way. Again, a pretty simple figure. The tailoring is amazing. And it's one of the figures that not everybody has. So I'm still, and always, proud to own it. Now we've gone lights out and above head height. And we're in the Master's Lighthouse. As you can see, it's the Man of Steel, another figure that I so heavily customised. Really, really proud to still have it. And I'm up. Do you know when you've done a little bit of tinkering, you think, "Oh, I've done a great job on that." That is how I feel about this figure, and would probably never, probably never sell it for that reason. Because I, I look at it and I think, "Well, I did this to mine, and I made it one of a kind." I know it's very, very similar to everybody else's, but I just really like it. It's a figure that you don't have to overly pose but it just looks good and I like the fact that the eight lights inside this cabinet 
they just really complement it and pick up on the fact that I sort of I sprayed the face down with a, um, like an air spray or a, a soft glow and the fact now that the sort of sheen on his face is picked up not only by the camera lights but also the lights inside the box I just really like something about it like I said simple pose but the cape does all the work but yeah from a distance it looks fucking beautiful moving down and outside the cabinet we're talking NBA tastic I've got to, um, I don't know, sort of from Jordan onwards, the biggest names I would think, probably aside from Alan Iverson, who will be coming out soon. A couple of others you would say down the uh, the chronological Hall of Fame, I suppose. You'd always have to go back to Jordan, which is a really nice figure. For those who don't know, these are by Enter Bay. Uh, really nice piece, very, very accurate. Just a shame that the bodies, you do see joints, but it's a nice trade-off because they are really well articulated. I suppose the next uh, ruler after Jordan would have been Kobe Bryant, and even up to recently, he's just passed uh, Michael Jordan's scoring record. Not my favourite head sculpt for this figure, but I went with it because I thought it fit the pose better than the game phase. But again, really nice figure, really nice accurate sneakers, and the bases are really good, just what you need. Suppose after Kobe, the torch would probably pass to LeBron. Still probably king at ring, so to speak. Again, nice figure, two head sculpts. Let down a little bit with the sneakers on this one. And obviously now he's wearing the Heat outfit, he would need to, uh, I would need to pick up a custom Cavaliers outfit from somewhere, but a nice figure. Probably somewhere, I don't know, Hall of Fame, um, MVP, I think, 2011, could be wrong. So, I don't know, pretender to throne, I would say, because he's plagued with injuries, Derek Rose, and he could be a, a total great. I still really like to watch him play, and I do prefer his highlight reels to LeBron's, if I'm honest. I just think there's something really exciting about how he plays. And I suppose the modern powerhouse of the court. A lot of you people might not know these. It might be worth doing a little bit of screen and watch him. Fucking slam dunk king, Blake Griffin, again, nice figure. And as you see, they are all to scale the different sizes and that they don't use the uh, body over and over again. So a really nice collection. And now moving across to the left hand side cabinet, definitely a set of uh, figures that not everybody would be interested in or even choose to collect. Some might not even know them. It's the damn toys gangsters kingdom. Uh, I feel really privileged to own them, I've got to be honest. So I'll just talk you through them. This is the exclusive Jack of Spades. Came out uh, earlier this year. Weren't many made. Oh, luckily I did get one. Played a really good price as well. Thanks to some friends out there in Singapore. The other exclusive was Saxon. Although it didn't come like that. There are other bits and bobs that I've used to get him looking like that. I do really like him. It's like he's doing a bank job. A bit of an heist. Some of that. I do like that. This is the original J, which were a bitch to find, and this is the figure that introduced me to Budget Stark or Anthony Sang. I searched and searched online for that figure, and could I fuck find it? Anthony, not a problem. Picked it me straight up. So again, I'm not even going to cut, I'm going to move down. And I'm going to bend my knees, because I'm getting old. <clears throat> again, more Gangster's Kingdom. This is the Three of Diamonds, based on Danny Trejo. Again, really, really nice looking figure. The uh, custom work is, uh, sorry, costume work is definitely on par with Hot Toys with these. Anybody who's seen them in hand will testify to that. If you haven't seen them, it's easy to talk them down because they're low price figures compared to Hot Toys, but they don't uh, skimp and scrape. It's a really nice collection. The Tour Diamonds, based on uh, Scott Adkins or Yori Boyka from the films. And then one I set up myself. That's why I've named him Clipper, after good old Uncle Clipmeister. He even put it on his tactical vest. That's the Dev Grew Red Sculpt, like I've said before, from the Dev Grew Red team. I just think he stands really nice with them. Again, I'm not cut, I'll just move down. Back to the Spade Gang. It's the Two of Spades of Vinnie Jones. Looking mostly. Three of Spades, Bernie, who's based on Wayne Rooney. And the four of spades, who is based on Colin Farrell. 
name is uh, Chad not to be confused with Chad man from YouTube or Facebook I'll put a short pause in and we'll move on down and down here as you see it's the three versions of Michael Jackson I did used to have the Billie Jean one but I thought that was the worst available the price became very attractive and I moved it on sort of miss it sometimes more so for the outfit but I do really like these I do prefer these three as you can see I've got the Thriller one the back there the Billie Jean which I think has got the best head sculpt looking really nice and then at the front I've got the DX 03 from Bad and Dirty Diana very rarely have the Dirty Diana clothes on because I think the bad clothes are so iconic they're the ones I normally go with so I noticed my light's gone off on my camera and I'm not sure why but you can see you get the idea so like I said at the beginning ooh, let me stand up I'm getting too old for this <clears throat> like I said at the beginning Merry Christmas to everybody Thanks to my new subscribers. Um, like I say, if you'd all be so good as to share me content, like my videos, comment. Um, yeah. In fact, I will say, anybody who comments on this one, I will try and answer them because I'll be over Christmas. I'll be bored to fucking tears with family and I'll be sat at computer for a lot of it. So I will get back, answer some comments. Um, like I said, this is where my collection ended. 2014 i suppose it was another good year for me i'm really grateful for what i've got or what i've had uh even grateful to you guys for supporting me but for now this is a clipper king and i am out of here